let's run some regressions for this simulated data set or artificial data set for which we actually have an average treatment effect of 50% and look at the results. So the first regression is just a simple OLS regression just on the treated dummy. And we know the average true average treatment effect is 15%, uh, but here we find a coefficient of basically 24 percentage points by which the treatment should increase the probability to find a job. Why is that? Because we typically have an indigeneity problem. We, we have in region B more treated people, but in region B we generally have a higher chance to find a job. So the, the, the treatment dummy also basically indirectly has the effect uh, or captures the effect that uh, uh, that in region B we have a higher chance to find a job, but uh, also from region B we are more likely to be treated. So this is a confounder and if we don't control it, we have a positive bias. If we now run the same regression, so we only request untreated, but we give each observation uh, a weight that is identically to the inverse probability of being allocated to their groups so is basically um, those weights, the inverse selection probability. So these, uh, if an observation is from the control group in region B gets a weight of four, and uh, those from region A get a weight of two, and in the treatment group, they get a weight of, of uh, four thirds. And we use then basically this weighted regression formula where we add these weights for each observation. Uh, then we will exactly estimate here the average treatment effect. It's exact because I basically didn't add any noise uh, um, uh, because we take exactly those numbers which are computed here. So it's kind of the, the sample average treatment effect, but we exactly find this 0 0.15. So this inverse probability weighting using in the regression, in the weighted least squares regression allows us here to directly capture this average treatment effect. We don't need to control for the regions um, just using these weights as a sort of a control, uh, uh, not only uh, accounts basically for the different treatment effects in region A and B and takes the right average, basically also gets rid of this uh, bias uh, from the fact that in region B we have a uh, larger baseline probability. So kind of like, like a wonder using this weights uh, works nicely to get rid of this bias here. If instead we would use um, um, an OLS regression using region fixed effects, we kind of should also kind of eliminate the bias that uh, region, the regions are a confounder and in region B we have a higher share of treated, but we still don't directly estimate the average treatment effect. We have a slightly smaller estimate, 0.143, so only 14.3 percentage points. And the reason is very subtle. Uh, I have already noted that basically there's a theoretical result that um, if you add just region spe specific fixed effects, then you take an average of the treatment effects between both regions. So we, we really get rid of this uh, bias that uh, we have a larger base uh, probability to find a job in region B, but we, we so we take uh, an average of the treatment effect, that's fine, but we put a higher weight on region A where the share of subjects in the control and treatment group is more equal. You can get some intuition from it um, in the sense that you, you need variation between control and treatment uh, guys basically to estimate an effect. And if you would think, for example, that we would have in region B only guys in the control group or only guys in the treatment group, then kind of we cannot really estimate for this region uh, an impact. And if we have very unequal um, uh, assignments, then we also would have kind of a smaller variance in the treatment dummy in this region. And having a larger variance in the treatment dummy, and we have the largest variance if, if the uh, assignment shares to control and treatment groups are the same, then um, we can better estimate these effects and it essentially gets a larger weight in the regression. But you don't have to understand why that is the case, but basically we have now a mean between 10 and 20, which is gives more weight to the 10 percentage point. Therefore, we estimate a, a smaller um, effect if we add this region dummy. But you really don't have to follow why, but it's just an observation. 
using this weighted regression basically really gives us the exact average treatment effect uh, controlling for region effects kind of removes the worst part of the uh, bias, but we don't get exactly the average treatment effect. And I, I think this is a result which also probably uh, 20 years ago, few economists would be aware of. <laughs> and actually, I wouldn't also have known before I um, prepared this uh, lecture and um, read a little bit in, uh, into this paper and uh, problems with average treatment effect and so on. That being said, you don't have to use a weighted regression to compute uh, the correct average treatment effect. You could also do what we have discussed already in chapter three to deal with heterogeneity to add interaction terms. So the last regression I have shown here basically uh, adds the region B dummy, but we also add an interaction term between treatment uh, uh, dummy and the region B dummy. And that's what we would want to do if we assume that there might be heterogeneous effects between the, the regions. And here in our estimation, we basically find now uh, a coefficient in front of treated of 0.1, so it's only 10%. It's actually uh, the effect in region A. For region B, we find this 0.3, we don't have to discuss, but we also find kind of for the interaction between treated and region B, also a 10% effect. Now, if we this means if we would predict the average treatment effect in region B, it would be this basic 10% plus this 10% in, uh, from, from this dummy, so it would be 20%. So this regression finds that we have a 10% treatment effect in region A and a 20% treatment effect in region B. And if we would take now the average, if we know uh, both regions are the same, then we could manually compute a 10% plus uh, one half 10% plus one half uh, 20% is 15%. So we can recapture from a regression with appropriate interaction terms. So everything we think may have a heterogeneous effect. Every explanatory variable we could kind of um, account for with interaction terms. Then we could also recompute the average treatment effect. So using interaction terms still works, but um, this can is kind of harder to read and, and to analyze. So if we have a lot of regions, it's easier to use these weighted regressions. And it's also nice we have directly uh, then later standard errors and, and p-values for this average treatment effect. If we have all these interaction terms, we just have to manually recompute um, the average treatment effect. So I think that's a reason why in many modern papers, things like using inverse probability weightings to compute appropriate average treatment effects is quite popular instead of using a lot of interaction terms, which would be an alternative.